Welcome everyone to Local Union Leadership and the Teacher Librarian. My name is Sarah Weathered and I am a teacher librarian from New Westminster. I taught at New West Secondary for 20 years as teacher librarian and presently I'm in my second term as president of the New Westminster Teachers Union. And so today I thought I would share some small and not so small ways of um, uh, getting more involved in your local union and perhaps beyond that. So first of all, I wanted to, I was gonna set up a really cool poll and I didn't get to that. So I'm wondering if people would mind um, turning on the cameras and perhaps sharing what their, uh, uh, why they took this uh, workshop. Please. So if I started with, yes. Hi, Lila. Lila. Lila, sorry. That's okay. Um, I'm a staff rep for my school. And um, actually, I was supposed to present this morning <laughs> about um, how being part of um, district and uh, union um, initiatives can help grow your leadership. So part of that is for me as a librarian to be connected to issues that involve staff so that I can, um, you know, do all the things that a teacher librarian is supposed to do. Excellent. Um, I have one that says 1291. Twelve ninety one. That would be me. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Jillian Wen. I'm uh, up in Terrace. I'm Coast Mountain School District eighty two. Uh, oh, excuse me. I am new to the teacher librarian uh, thing. I've been a literacy teacher and a classroom teacher for a very very long time, uh, but this is my first go at this, and I'm already experiencing all sorts of kickback about what a teacher librarian is, what it isn't from my administration. So I thought maybe I should get informed. I know your um I know your president. She's actually a student in my Queen's University class. Oh Jocelyn, um, you know Jocelyn? Jocelyn. Yeah, I know Jocelyn. Jocelyn's so amazing. I've had a conf had a conversation about her uh, <laughs> with her about um the role of the teacher librarian. And Brian yeah. says that uh, he's on campus and there's no camera or mic on this desktop, but maybe Brian, could you stick in the chat the reasons why you found this uh, workshop interesting or why you wanted to take this? Okay. So Brian says I'm involved in the BCTLA and BTLA and just wanted to hear someone else's perspective. Great. So welcome everyone. Um, oh, I have a new person in here, Kathleen McKay. Welcome Kathleen. Um, if you feel comfortable, would you mind turning on your camera and saying why you decided to take this workshop? Hi, um, well, I decided to take this workshop because I am actually already, I have been quite involved in my local union for teacher librarians at the elementary level. When I arrived at, <clears throat> at my school district four five years ago, we discuss, as a teacher librarian, when teacher librarians were newly implemented, we discovered a huge discrepancy and in inequality in how the teacher librarians were used at the secondary, middle, and elementary level. Uh, primarily, um, teachers were prep teachers at the elementary level, and we didn't think that that was a reasonable use of the teacher librarian skill set, uh, nor did it seem reasonable that middle school teachers and secondary teachers were able to actually do the, the duties outlined in the teacher librarian job description and elementary teachers didn't seem to have time in their schedule to utilize those skills. 
especially since those are the ones that they train for. So I thought I would join and see what else, what other things are happening in other places. Excellent. So um, I thought uh, I'll go through my PowerPoint and then we could just have a discussion of, um, uh, you know, other ways that we can get involved. Uh, we've got about 35 minutes and I must admit my PowerPoint is um, low on content. And I, um, I, I said to Christy Oxley, um, the BCTLA president, uh, yeah, I can talk about anything for 45 minutes. So <laughs> here we go. Um, so in my district in New Westminster, um, I have 13 table officers. And of that, of those 13, four, four of the 13 are trained teacher librarians. And it seems that we only have 15 trained teacher librarians in our district. Um, a 13 of them actually, well, if I take myself out of that, 12 actually um, in a library right now. I think that's a really high participation rate um, for, for um, involvement in the higher echelons of our union. So uh, Christy Oxley, who is the BCTLA president, she is my first vice president and our um, BCTLA, uh, our BCTLA treasurer, Lisa Seddon, um, who is also a teacher librarian, she is um, our protee chair. So, and my bargaining chair is also a, uh, a teacher, is a trained teacher librarian who's now teaching in a grade five classroom. So as like in my local teach, I always say teach librarians are taking over. Um, so, what? so um, I wanted to talk about some of the roles that I've had. So um, I've done a whole bunch of different things and I can actually add a few more onto there. So um, I started out as a protee chair, um, uh, moved into being a staff rep, a site protee chair. I was an LR for a little bit. Um, I was the benevolent fund person at my school for a long time. Um, I chaired the bursaries, the, the teachers union bursaries and presented that. Um, I was, for a little bit, I was staff committee co-chair. Our 2014 strike, I was the strike pay coordinator. I was also the strike coordinator for my local. I was a picket captain. Um, I being first vice president, being second vice president, now I'm local president. Um, I also, sorry. yeah. Sorry, can I, um, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, can I jump in here for a quick question? Sure, sure. I find that uh, I'm in uh, SD72 in Campbell River, and mm -hmm. I find um, that there's quite a big discrepancy in teachers who have been part of the CRDTA for a long time, and then maybe newer staff reps. And mm -hmm. I was just wondering, did you take any of the BCF training pro D or was this sort of like a learning as you go type of extra, um, extra career path? <laughs> interesting. So um, I'll tell you my story of how I got involved. And then, so, um, so I'm going to say I'm also from Vancouver Island originally. I'm from Duncan and you can't be, uh, someone really from Vancouver Island and not have someone in the forest industry. And my dad was um, a proud IWA member. He was a shop steward. Um, and um, so I've always been a strong union supporter. And I taught for six years in a private school uh, where we didn't get much pay because, you know, the owner of the school had to wear Armani and drive a Jaguar. So, um, so when I got to, when I finally got a job in New West in, in the public school system, you know, I kind of flew under the radar for a couple of years, but our local president tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I think you would be a really good protee chair. And so, so um, I did do the BCTLA, uh, sorry, the BCET uh, summer leadership conference training, but really, um, I learned it on the job, the summer leadership conference stuff. Um, and I decided to be a staff rep after my, um, 
principal was just being horrid to me and she she was horrible so i decided that was it i wanted to be a staff rep and um uh attended you know training that the that the local offered but we had a really long time serving staff rep who kind of took me under his wing and mentored me and you know just made certain that i i knew what i was doing so my school um New West Secondary has 2000 students and 120 teachers. So we don't have one or two staff reps. We have six. Um, that that's a good number for New West Secondary six. Um, so uh, I, I, you know, I was taken under the wing. Um, I, I then as local prote chair, because I continued being local prote chair, I did that for 12 years and try to mentor other people to be able to come into that role. Um, and then I left Pro D and I became the treasurer, but I was still a staff rep. Um, and when I was treasurer of my local, uh, the previous treasurer kind of worked with me for a year. Uh, so then I understood the job and I was treasurer for about five years. And then I became Pro D chair again. So I was a staff rep, Pro D chair and treasurer. And then um, I don't know why, but I stuck my hand up and said that I wanted to run when we created a second vice president position. I stuck my hand up and said I wanted to run for second vice president. And I didn't win second vice president uh, the first time, but the second time I did win. Um, and uh, our local president had been a longtime staff rep and he sat with me and he kind of, ex um, we, we had a, a, a tragedy in our, in our local in that this longtime staff rep that had mentored me and our local bargaining chair, he had been, you know, a local bargaining chair for almost 20 years. He died like of a heart attack. He went home after an, ex um, um, an executive meeting and he went to bed and he never woke up. He died of a massive heart attack. So it was like, oh crap. It's the bargaining year. Um, no one's ever done local bargaining that's on the executive because Pat had always done it. Um, so my local president and I decided that um, I we would work together. And our first vice president at the time, he had been longtime first vice president, and he um, but he was kind of transitioning out. So um, the the local president and I, we learned the job together. And then when he got sick, um, uh, the next year I was first vice president. Um, and in 2020, he got sick. And I, I basically took over from him as we were transitioning into remote learning. I was transitioning into the job of local president. So I had kind of had two years on the job training of how to be a local president, um, but I always take every opportunity that the BCTF offers to um, to do that training. So whether it's summer leadership conference or um, Federation Leadership Institute or any of the staff rep training that we have on, you know, for for our local, I I was there. Um, did that answer your question? Voice over. Excellent. Oh, Thanks. Excellent. Okay. So, um, so all of this ended with started with a tap on the shoulder of um, this wonderful female president that we had that saw something in me that I didn't think, you know, I didn't think that I had any sort of leadership abilities. And uh, she, she, um, well, you can see all the things I've done. I also have been to the BCTF AGM for 16 16 AGMs. I was a CERT trainer for the BCTF for a little while. And uh, for five years, I was the deputy returning off. I was the assistant deputy returning officer for the BCTF. But in those five years, we never had one, one vote. So it was great. Like, so I got to put it on my resume, but I actually didn't have to do anything. So, oh, and I was deputy returning officer for my local for 16 years as well. I think I'm still officially the returning officer, so I have to find someone to do that job. But those are all the roles I've had. Um, and, but we want to talk about qualities that make TL's good beauty.
African leaders, and I think Keely talked about this in the um, uh, keynote this morning. Um, so some of the things that make us really good union leaders are um, we're organized. So we know how to be organized and keep organized um, notes. Um, you know, um, we can come up with a system to keep all that information, um, you know, readily available. We are detail oriented. Uh, we often teach note taking skills within our units that we do in our library. And I find that note taking skills are really important. Um, every meeting that I go to, I need to take notes um, and I need to know, I need to be cognizant of the fact that the notes that I take this year might be used in a grievance or in bargaining 20 years from now. Because uh, last summer I read through our entire union archives and I was looking at bargaining notes from the 80s. And I have had to actually consult those recently within uh, because of a mediation that I'm working on um, with BCTF lawyers. Um, we work well with, not, with others. We know everyone in the school, whether that be uh, staff or students, our QP or our support staff colleagues. We are diverse in our knowledge um, and we are diplomatic. So um, as uh, people who need to work well with others or else our jobs are really, really hard, we have to learn how to have that diplomacy. So there is many times, there have been many times in the last couple of weeks where I've put down the phone and, you know, I've had to be very nice to someone on the phone who have just been idiots. And uh, I, you know, I can't tell them that they've, you know, you're being an idiot. I have to think of a nice way to perhaps redirect them. And I think as a teacher librarian, we have to do that all the time as well. So I think these are, this is why um, I believe that teacher librarians are really great um, union leaders. So um, there's simple ways to get involved in your local. Um, first, by attending your general meetings. And um, this was my first step into being um, involved. The general meetings were always held in my library, so it was pretty darn easy to be involved that way. Like, I just had to quite literally move from my desk to a seat. Um, you can also attend a meeting of your local specialist association. So here in New West, we have a really active chapter of the BCTLA. Um, attend one of those meetings. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Um, you could join a school committee such as pro d or if you have social justice or staff reps uh, sorry staff committee or at my school we have a reconciliation committee too so perhaps doing something like that or volunteer to be the sunshine fund person um here in new westminster uh our sunshine fund is uh is um uh, $15 from the union sends $15 for every member at a site to the um, to the schools to help pay for those things like uh, celebrations of births, celebrations of weddings. Um, if you're ill, if um, unfortunately you've had a family member pass away, um, all of those those things. And that's a really simple. Um, that's actually quite a quite an easy way to get involved in the local. Um, and you get to know everyone if you haven't, if you don't already know everyone. Um, I knew certainly when uh, people um, had uh uh death within the family my principal told me first right like he would just email me and let me know um that this person needed you know we needed to reach out to that person so that's a simple way to get involved in the local um there's some intermediate ways so uh running for the executive of your ll um your lsa so 
Brian said that he was actively involved in that. So um, being chapter counselor or chapter president, um, being the recording secretary or perhaps the treasurer um, in smaller locals, I, I, at least in New Westminster, we've never had to have an, an election for our executive of um, an LSA. It's always been like we stare down the person that we want to be that to to hold uh, that position. So uh, I was president of uh, the New Westminster Teacher Librarians Association for at least 12 years because no one else wanted to do it. And I was very happy when we hired a district librarian after the re reinstatement of the uh, um, the restored language, because uh, traditionally in our local, the district librarian had been the chapter president. Um, and so when that position was hired, um, who is Christy Oxley, our BCTLA president, um, we had a long conversation about she was worried that I was going to be upset that I wasn't going to that I, uh, you know, if she ran for a chapter president, I was like, no, please, please do it, do it. So it um, so you can do that. Uh, you could become chair of a committee at your school, whether that's a pro D chair or a social justice chair or any of those other committees that you have at school. Um, you could run to be a delegate at the BCTF AGM. Um, depending on your, um, if you've never been to a BCTF AGM, there's 700 people in one room making decisions during spring break. It's an interesting, um, it's, it's an interesting uh, meeting to participate in. It's very formal, but it can also be kind of fun. There's also, um, great keynotes and your local gets uh, the number of delegations based on delegates based on their population. Um, here in New Westminster as president, um, we are automatically a, de uh, a delegate. The president is automatically a delegate and we elect five or six other members to go as well as our two local reps. And, um, you know, that's a great way to get involved so you know you, you know, there, it's kind of a team building thing, but you also know what's happening with the BCTF. Um, you know, becoming a staff rep is an intermediate way to get involved in the local, depending on your local. Um, in, in my local, uh, staff reps are also part of the executive. So they we don't have like a staff rep assembly. I know some bigger locals have a staff rep assembly and then they have their executive. We join everything together. But um, becoming a staff rep, because you know everyone in the school, um, as teacher librarian, um, it's a, a great way to get involved in the local. Um, and you could also volunteer to be a union appointed member on a district committee. So in our collective agreement, we have that um, Every district committee um, where there's a uh, uh, participation by an NWTU member, the NWTU has to endorse that person to be a, to be a committee member. So, um, you know, you might have different committees like a, a tech committee, a district tech committee, or we have like an anti-racism committee. We have um, an Aboriginal advisory committee. We now have a global, uh, what's it called the climate action strategy committee um and you know that might be something that you are interested in as well so um you know that's kind of an intermediate an intermediate way to get involved and um a more advanced way would be to run um for a table officer position like pro d or social justice and for me as a prode chair, um, I got to know someone in every school um, as when we had our prode meeting. So all, all, you know, we had one representative or two representatives from every school. So I got to know a lot of people. Um, and as chapter counselor, sorry, as chapter president, I knew every teacher librarian in the district. So when I was going to run for something more, um, I had those built-in allies. 
I also worked at the largest school in the district. So we have 450 members and one third of the members of the of um, the NWTU are at New West Secondary. So I had quite a large group of people who I, I hoped I could count on if I ever came to an election that I'd win. So, you know, running for a table officer position, sometimes you get release time, sometimes you don't. Bigger districts like Pro D is um, a released officer or or the um, or the portfolio of one of the first vice presidents. Here in New Westminster, I am the only released officer. So um, everyone else is just uh, released on an as needed basis. You could also run as local rep to the BCTF. Um, it's six, it's three meetings, um, weekend meetings, and then the BCTF AGM. So it's about 10 days in total that you are um, responsible for going to meetings. And then um, at least in my local, the LRs come like they're part of our table officers. So uh, they come to our executive. So that's another way that you can get involved in your local. Um, you could also apply to be on a BCTF committee or apply to be a um, cert trainer or, you know, uh, there's lots and lots of different opportunities, whether it be, um, you know, being on the finance committee or uh, there's uh, they, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of all the names of the committees that they have, but there's like the judicial council and there's all sorts of other committees that you can get involved with. Um, and so depending on your time um, and your, your, uh, your comfort level, there's lots of different jobs. And as I wanted to, it came out before, um, there's always mentorship within a union. So if you're taking on more of a leadership role within your union, there's usually always someone there for advice. So whether it's the current people or the past people in the role, um, uh, BC, uh, if you are in the local office um, as a released officer, there's always BCTF field services. I have my field services person's phone number attached to my monitor because uh, um, I, at least once a week I, I call her for advice. And if she doesn't know what happens, then there's other people at the BCTF to advise them. So there's someone to, to help. And I think that um, this is really important when you're thinking about getting involved in the union, uh, more involved within the union, that you know that there's always someone there to help. So I see my job, I know I'm not going to do this job for much longer. It might be, I might decide not to run in May um, and go back to my to my library, or I decide to, to run for one more year and, and then I would lose being able to go back to my library because of our collective agreement language. But I know my job is to train the next president. So I'm trying to get my two vice presidents into the office more. So then they know how the office runs and they know like the systems and what to do if you're doing an in investigation or what the steps of a grievance are and what the steps in our collective agreement say, but what actually happens. And, um, you know, so I'm taking on that mentorship role as well. Um, yeah, so that was like the formal part of my presentation, but I'm more than happy to, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, I'm more than happy to take questions or, you know, if you want to chat, like, bang ideas off, bounce ideas off of each other, that would be great. We've got about 10 minutes, 11 minutes left. I don't actually have any questions. That was very comprehensive. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and there's really a lot oh. of avenues. So it, it's very interesting to, you know, see how you um, went from one to the other to the other. Yeah, it, it's, I, I never actually 
thought that I'd be local president. And if someone had told me three years ago that I'd be local president, I would tell them that they were a dirty, rotten liar. Um, I, when I ran for second vice president, I thought I'd be second vice president till I retire. Um, but circumstances changed. Yeah, thank you for sharing all of that. I don't have any questions either. I think it's just, a, you know, good information to think about, like, what level of commitment I'm willing to give. Um, at this point, I'm super involved in the, you know, our local bargaining. We really want to get some strong language mm -hmm. for our elementary teacher librarians so that they don't have to cover so much prep, that there is something written down because we know that there are a couple of school districts who do have specific language that says, you know, teacher elementary teacher librarians don't give any prep coverage to mm -hmm. teacher librarians are not expected to give X amount of prep coverage that their primary role is collaboration. So that's what we're working on at the moment. And, um, and all the other good information is, is lots to think about. Thanks for sharing. So bargaining is interesting. I did my first round of bargaining like three years ago and I was on our bargaining team. Um, and yeah, just being able to help with that research, we've got the research abilities, right? So we can, we can do research. We're generally well-spoken. We generally can write well, we can help write that language. Um, my role um, even this year as local president, I am the recording secretary because I am, I can take almost perfect word for word what was said notes. Um, the first day of our local bargaining three years to three years ago, I took 50 pages of handwritten notes. I can't type and think at the same time. So I so I handwrite and think. Um, and so I thought that I would get to be lead bargainer this year because, you know, I am the president, but apparently not. Um, so, well, you know, like we all have our skill set, right? Like, yeah, I don't, I have no desire to take notes. Are you kidding me? We need people like you to take the notes. Um, so, you know, um, I bargaining, you're right, is interesting. I'm learning so much about um, that research piece about picking up what has happened in the past, what's past practice versus what's actually written down what you know what language works what to ask for what to hope for it's such an interesting process really and i think you know a, a, the bright person for bargaining is someone who is patient for the process because it can be infuriating if you're not that kind of person who just like sits back and says nope that's not what I want. And you just, you know, you're able to sit back and say, when you get to where I want, we'll have a conversation. But, you know, at bargaining, you got to pick your battles. And I'm learning that. I'm learning to just say, this is it. This is what we hope for. I've given my best. You have to, I think in bargaining, you have to learn how to be, first of all, you have to be very diplomatic. You have to be able to read the other people. Um, I was actually doing negotiations this week and it was, it was actually really fun. This week has been really fun. Um, we had a mediation a couple months, like two months ago about class size for summer school. And we had our community educators 20 years ago merged with our regular, like the association of community educators, their union merged with the NWTU and they created this document. Like they, like there was a merger agreement and there was no such thing as class size or composition mm. uh, for community educators, but they agreed that they would meet to discuss class size and composition for summer school and night school. But in the meantime, Christy Clark stripped all of the class size and composition language. So we're in the meet in the mediation and I found the bargaining notes cause I read them all this summer and um, they had agreed that in um yes there would be no class size and composition language but they they would meet and have this this committee but in the meantime class size would be 16. <laughs> so um 
the mediator ruled that we had to negotiate class size and composition for a summer school and night school. And that's what I did this week. So I am the only local president in the BCTF who have been allowed to negotiate class size and composition in the last 20 years. So that's been really fun. And, and really? we got numbers that we got numbers that our members could live with. Uh, senior admin could live with and BCTF lawyers didn't think we gave away the farm. So that's good. Congratulations. Yeah, well, it was yeah. fun. It was fun. Looking forward to our, our uh, regular bargaining. Um, so I was asking about, sorry, Lala was asking about job descriptions, TL job descriptions. Langley has one. And then um, someone uh, 1271 says that their district has a draft document. Um, I don't know where 1291, what, what, um, what district are you in 1291? You're in Terrace, right? I'm, I'm in Terrace. Um, and <laughs> this came up because, um, I'm being asked to not ever be in the library. <laughs> so I was I'm like, I'm so hey. sorry you're experiencing that. That's terrible because there were better uses for my considerable skill set. So you're clearly seasoned and uh, well- I'm a seasoned educated. teacher, if not a seasoned teacher librarian. So I have a little bit of <clears throat> attitude behind me from being a teacher since 1988. But um, yeah, so I am trying to do teacher librarian jobs that I consider teacher librarian jobs, which is, you know, find resources for teacher, help students find books um, in my prep time, in my lunch time, in bizarre periods of time that um, kids can find me and grab me and, and try and engage me in, in, in meaningful ways in a librarian way. But I'm being told that my job is really to be a literacy teacher. That's interesting. Yeah. So maybe it would be good for you to read other dis, um, other districts, teacher librarian jobs descriptions to see. I, I would love that. You know, to see what what is the changing role. Uh, you know, I know that in Langley, the changing role is of of a library is actually a learning commons, and so they're moving from uh, from library to learning commons. So what the library looked like in 1988 and 2000 and now 2021 is it's so different um and um the movement into providing a a space of learning that includes not just resources um print resources digital resources but also things such as makerspace such as um um oh my gosh well, I had a ADST, you know, stuff like that. I, I created so, a readers theater group. It's really um, interesting. I, I think it would be um, helpful to you to read just, just, just what other districts are doing, just to it, give you. A bit it of really idea. would. I yeah. don't know if anyone is willing to share, but I'm totally willing to share Langley's. It's not a problem. That would be great. You, yeah. Um, should I just put my? Oh, well, is my email? I could put my email in the. Um. I, you know, I have two screens going, so I can go on my email on this other computer here. I'll put my email on. Oh, can't type and talk at the same time, apparently. You know, there's my email. librarians are organized. I've, I've, I don't have enough space for all my things. I know. <laughs> my desk has got like seven piles in it right now. because I thought I can listen and do all these things that everyone's asked me to do at the same time. There you there used to be a document on the BCTLA website, and I can't for the life of me find it in like 30 seconds, about what it, what uh, what the job of a teacher librarian is. So you might also want to check the BCTLA yes, uh, website. Yes, that that's a brilliant idea. They have an amazing document. And that's just BC? BCTLA.ca. Okay. I know I shared with um, your local president the the posting that we have for um, for a teacher librarian, but it's very innocuous. It doesn't actually say like what the job is. It's just whatever. It's it's very strange. But 
Yeah, um, it's a it's a big fight up here. Yes, I've heard. What I have heard. heard. And um, <laughs> I didn't realize I was walking into a battle when I took this position. <laughs> Are you in the library right now? I am. That's why I keep spinning around. Okay, double I'm, checking. I'm in a, a little glass glass wall room. How and big just, is your school? How many students? Um, just over 200. Oh, that's a lovely size. It's, uh, yeah, we're primary. So it's they're all sort of K, K to three. Oh so many fun things to do with the primary and the learning commons. It's, well, like I said, I, I started a Weedis theater group and we were having a blast with it. Kids who couldn't read very well. So I started a Weedis theater group with a, and their fluency just in the, three or four weeks we met was coming up tenfold, but I was told it's not part of my job and it was taken away. Fascinating. Oh my gosh, my principal wouldn't, you know, I've had a lot of principals, but my principal would never try to tell me what my job is because they have no idea what I do. Mind you, I'm going to tell you that I've been married for 27 years and my husband would not know what I do. And I've been a teacher like um, I was a classroom teacher when I met him. I did my teacher librarian training um, while we were married, but he has no idea. He has oh. absolutely no idea what I do. My husband's past president of the CMD, uh, in of the TDTU, so he does know what I do. <laughs> in fact, he probably has a better idea what my job description is than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is noon. I am more than happy to hang out for a few minutes, but um, well, I'm, I'm I am to go and eat. But I need yeah. to eat. So do I, I do need to eat too. Um, eat other than chocolate. <laughs> yes, I have uh, my. As uh, I was laughing at Keely when she said that she had that drawer full of stuff, I've always had a drawer full of food, and like I share it with staff and um, mm -hmm. some students. But and I've kept it here in my my union office. <laughs> I have a drawer full of food. So yeah. Anyways, I hope you all have a lovely day, and I hope you, you found some use in this. Okay, so, thank you. Have a thank great you. rest of your day. Jillian, Jillian and I'm going to send you that job description now. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay. Bye now. Bye.